Well folks, how the hell are you? Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're starting off with a Makita hammer. This one's a HM860C. And she's a 2005 machine. Striker sound to be a bit slack inside. Right, what's wrong with this? Mm. Doesn't sound healthy anyway. Right. Sometimes when they spark like that, it can be a set of brushes. Either the lead's broken, the brushes are totally wearing, worn down, or they're not sitting right. Can make that sort of spark and spluttering sound. 90% of the time, it's not. Whenever you can smell it stinking of a burnt out motor, it's a burnt out motor. So that's what this one is. She's burnt out. It makes an unmistakable smell. And if you get a really bad one, it starts to smoke. It stinks the workshop out for the whole day. That and that. Yeah. Brushes aren't worn out. You can see the damage on them. Same. See the ends all destroyed. Right, so we need to get onto this end. Bolts for the motor come down from the top. You can get to these two, but you can't get to the other ones. We spring down in here, we C clip. It just has to be prized out. It's not very big, it's not very strong, very really easy to take out. That out of the way, you have four little bearings here that you need to prize out. Take off that sleeve. One socket head down here. Pull the cover off. That was thrown. Right 
and mate. Need to change the striker o ring. That seems to be moving very freely inside. We want some here. I forgot. Take off the nut on the bottom. This is an M10 nut. It's easier to take them off using the wee impactor. It's hard to actually hold this fan and turn the nut at the same time. She's a standard thread. It's not reverse thread or anything. A couple wee taps of the impactor and it comes straight out. That's that. That's the fan. We should to pull that out and there's the damage she actually blew a segment clean out so that's totally gone so that's okay that's clean enough replace this now these aren't the most expensive hammers in the world pick these up for about five or six hundred euro but still replacing this put the new motor onto it new set of brushes and a few bits and pieces. You're looking at roughly about 150 euro. So this is 600 euro to buy new. You're saving a quarter just by replacing the motor. So it's well worth doing. Might be nearly 20 years old, but there's still plenty of work left on it. Now these ones can be a torture. This bearing's a tight fit. Sometimes you can pull them out. Sometimes you can't. What you want to do is put a bit of heat onto this here to expand the metal, and it'll just come straight out. But obviously, you can't do that because this air deflector is on the way. That's only plastic. You've got to melt that straight away if you put any heat onto it. So we have to go the long way. So you can see the head of the armature just there, that gear. You can get a, put this in a bearing press and press this here out to remove the armature. If you don't have a bearing press, there are alternatives. This armature is destroyed and so is the bearing. What you can do, just get a center punch, put it on top of the gear. And give it a wee tap. You just don't want to hit the main crank gear up here. You only want to hit the armature. That'll get it out for you. That's just if you don't have a bearing press. But like I say, these bearings are gone anyway. And so is that, plus the whole armature. So we're left with us. Now, because that actual striker on sides rolling back and forth, I will change the o-rings on the piston and the striker just to make sure this is hammering right. So that means I have to open this. Opening this, I do not want to contaminate the inside because I'm not going to service the whole thing. I only want to change the anti-o-rings. I'm not washing it out or changing the grease. So I don't want to contaminate the grease. 
You just want to give this a quick brush down first to get rid of any excess. Just to stop it rolling off and get onto the hammer section here. I can't turn it upside down either because the underside's open. Now there's also an oil seal underneath this bearing in here. That should be okay. There hasn't been any grease leaking out of here. This is just dust around the collar here. So that seal should be fine. Generally, these are quite a decent little hammer. But normally that is the problem. They're little. They're not very big. And that's generally the problem with them. They're only small. Basically a little chipping hammer. And what happens is they start being used for work they're not supposed to be doing. Can go under demolition or something like that there. Maybe even just taking tiles of a wall but they'll be using it for the entire day. Not giving the machine a chance to cool down at all. And it's, that's when the motor starts giving trouble. Boys burning them out. It's never to do with the amount of work that they're doing. These wee things generally, they sometimes are quite old, but they don't always have a while lot of work done. So it's not very often you'd be changing that seal there, unless you're giving the machine a complete service. Let's get a clean rag. Take that out. And there's your striker. And that's been dry for a little while. Maybe the o-ring has a slope on it here. She hasn't even worn evenly. Normally it's a full round or a flat spot. But that there's been running dry by the looks of it. So I'll put a wee top up of grease into that as well. Piston o-ring. Looks good. But we'll change that as well. Two o rings will keep this hammering like it should, and the new motor will keep it running. That's a heavy grease to be using on us here, but she's an old machine, that'll just help seal everything up nicely. Once it actually gets up to speed and running properly, that grease will migrate and move around. Whenever she's up to speed and running all the time, it'll actually thin out. Once she's warm, the viscosity will go down. There's a bit less stress on the motor. And bearing's okay. And that oil seal's alright. I think that should do us. Make sure there's Loctite and all the bolts because this thing is a hammer, it's going to be banging and vibrating. And then vibrations can loosen off the bolts, so a bit of Loctite keeps them on tight, stops from backing out.
Now, wash all these parts out, get them all cleaned down. Also clean this top cover. Leave that as is. This is already blown out, but everything else, give it a quick clean, get all the old grease off it, and we'll get it put, put back together again. So, one motor. That's the part number, if you're ever needing one. This is for the 110 volt version. One armature. Now, no bearing on the top. And there's no sleeve as well for the oil seal nor washer underneath so we'll have to pull off this bearing to get off this sleeve here and the washer underneath and be careful where you position your jaws you don't want to crush that washer underneath The washer don't need the bearing we just want the sleeve bearing number is a 6201 and she was a good Japanese bearing an NTN see if we can get something similar a nice fag bearing do the same job that on and the sleeve on top and press that all on one armature ready to go one other thing just don't forget your air deflector Mistake I've made plenty of times before in the past. Press on the armature, go to put the rest together again, and you've forgotten the air deflector. This has to go on before the armature. If you do it the wrong way around, you're going to have to press this back out again to get this on. Now, to get this in, you can use a bearing press, but because you're pressing like this, you're putting stress on the bearing outer wrist and you're not supporting it. A better way I find is to take this off for now. Get yourself a blowtorch. Heat up the metal so the bearing goes on easier. You mightn't even have to press it on. You can normally just press it on by hand then. And that's it. She's all the way on. It's not even too hot. Just give it a little bit of extra grease in there too, just to help things along. Not an awful lot, mind you, because we didn't wash this out. There's still plenty of grease in it. We're just giving it a wee top up. Now the seal. Now there should be a seal on the bottom of the top cover. Make sure that's still in place. This one's all right.
pan then, so the slack fit. It's your nut and washer. You clamp that down onto the armature. Doesn't take much to hold it on. Don't go nuts. Handle actually laps over the bottom cover. So put the cover on first before the handle. I will also change these brushes because these are burnt. 304, which is now a 303. Makita sometimes chop and change numbers. So 304 is just the old number. 303 is the same brush. Now, tool holder, a little bit of grease, and a little bit of grease down here where these wee steel balls will be going. Just press it on with your fingers. The grease helps to hold the balls in place also. Just want to get the excess away because it's going to squeeze out. Plastic sleeve on first. This would actually lock your chisel in position. This actually locks into these teeth here on this plastic ring. So that stops your chisel from rotating around. So only if we lift this up, you're free to actually turn the chisel and rotate the tool holder. These slots for the bearings facing up. Just rotate it. It drops on. Then push your bearings on. Push them down. Drop it on. And push it under the wee sleeve. It's a little tedious. The grease helps hold them into position. And your flat wash over the top of that. Then your little light spring holds on that flat washer, which holds everything down. And you just clip that on with your fingers. That's it. And everything else, that's the same as most hammers. Spring. Holder, and your actual locking devices, they just sit on top. Sleeve for locking them in, a nylon ring, and then a washer. And then that's all held down with a C clip.
cap and your top cap. One Makita HM 0860C with a new armature, new o rings, a little bit of grease, bearing, and some brushes. Give it a wee test. That's her. Another hammer, nearly 20 years old, with a new lease of life, with a new motor on it, ready for work again. So all in all, that repair cost about 180 euro, all on including labour and VAT. To buy that machine in the day probably cost about 600 euro, and the newer model now, the 8070C, would set you back about 600 euro. So it's either 180 euro to fix it up again, or 600 euro to replace it. No brainer. Something different for you today. This is a Rukamit plaster finishing machine. A big spinning disc for finishing plastered walls. This one is running. Only running on high speed, won't go into low speed. So this might be a simple fix. I've actually got two of these on. There's the first one, the other one will be a wee bit longer because it's a broken part. I definitely have to order a part for it. We'll see what we can do with this one. Now, same as any machine dealing with plaster, everything gets clogged. So she's basically a grinder, or even a die grinder actually, would be a better description of it. Grinder body down here, then a longer head at the top. So with die grinder you just be direct drive onto the spindle, to get high speed. This one's a bit different, it actually has a gearbox built in. A planetary gear system, they give a gear reduction. So it's not spinning as fast up here. All the speed's down here, higher torque and lower speed up here. And then up in the head as well, there's a big cog here up here too, and a worm feed. So this is spinning. So this ends up spinning even slower again. So they're all torque at the top and no speed. It means it puts the motor under very little strain. So these things actually run and last quite well. And going by that, I would actually say that's a Metabo grinder. That is a Metabo. I could get a Metabo speed control for this. But I wonder if we clean out. I might do the same thing. It's doing all plaster. Dirt and dust and moisture all day. It's inevitable that some get some. So maybe and we clean out a bit of contact cleaner. Might sort this out. Just get off the loose stuff here first. You can see how the moisture gets on and causes trouble. See that we lead. See how stuff it is. That's starting to corrode a little bit. There's copper in them leads. They start to turn a wee greenish tinge. Lead starts to become very stuff. Brush is still working on the holder, mind you. That's not stuff. Just free that up a wee bit just in case it holds back the brush. Get this out and put a compressor across it. Get all the dust out. 
Once that's clean, let me give it a wee bit of contact cleaner. I think she's just a wee bit grotty. Very odd time it does work. But it's not often. It's more of a quick fix than a permanent fix. We'll see if it does anything. So we were freer. Now, let's see if that made any difference at all. There we go. Good bit of difference actually. That's a wee simple fix for now. To be honest, don't think it'll last too long. Generally, when they do work, won't last as long as an actual new part. That will run for now. Could run a week, could run a month, could run a late year. You just don't know. So, what I'll actually do is we'll order on one of these speed controllers as well, just in case this ever does fail again. If it does, we'll just replace it then. But for now, this will keep this man running today. There's two of these left on. At least now he has one working. One rocker mat. The cleaned out speed controller up and running again. Plaster finishing tool. There's an oldie, an old blue Ryobi Kango. Don't even know the model of it. Might be a 485, not sure. Made in 2005. What's wrong with her? Hmm, not good. She seized. Could be a motor. This thing's very stuff. There we go. Right, get onto this thing. See what's going on. First off, spools. Check the brushes. See if we can peek at the armature. See if it is burnt out. Brushes are worn, but they're not worn out. Doesn't look too bad. It's actually solid, so it's not moving at all. Right, let's see what's going on up here. It's very 
nice stuff. Let's see, it was cross threaded. Right, it was jammed on the O-ring. Ah, here's the problem. That's why she's jammed, all right. She's trashed the needle bearing, and now she's jammed on the piston. That ain't budging. So, full strip for this. But, before we do that, let's see if we have any parts for it. Must be in an old blue Ryobi. They don't actually do parts for them anymore. So, so whatever I have in stock, if I have a piston stock or the pecan rod, we'll fix her up. But if not, I might be leaving this one. But first off, I need to know what it is. And the old Ryobi sheets. Drills, drills. Nothing on a computer. It's all just breakdown diagrams. Here we go. So this is the eight five. No, that's right. Just see if we can match like for like. So we have the same way fins down here. They're extended up here. Same fins up this side. She's got the big fat hammer section, the thun motor, square handle at the back. I would say that's it. I was going to say it's the wrong handle, but it is the right handle here. Yeah, we'll go with that. Same lock and attachment as well. We'll say it's a 485. CH 485. And we want the piston. Mm, I already have this marked obsolete number nine so that's no longer available I'll see if I have any on stock here and then one two three four well that's a short one no I don't have a con rod nor even a piston for it I've got motors I've got housings gear heads hammer tubes but no pistons or con rods left for them. So I'm afraid this is a no-go. Plus the amount of damage on that. The crank could also be damaged. I actually think I have one of them in stock. And without the con rod, there's not a thing I can do. So that is just not worth fixing. It's not even not worth fixing. It can't be fixed. No parts available. Now, another wee Makita. This is the older Makita saw, the DSS 611 brushed machine. And this one's not young either. She's done a wee bit of work. She's about 2020. Yeah, young enough. What she at? Nothing. Could be worn out brushes, unlikely, burnt wiring, or a faulty controller. It's not the brushes anyway. They haven't seen much work. Unless they're changed already. They certainly don't match the state of the machine. Not the brushes. We'll 
it on the side and check the wiring and check the controller. One more. Definitely been used in on it. There's a sign straight away. That burnt connector. So she's been put under a heavy load to do that. Probably stalled the machine a good bit at times and just kept on trying to run it and there's the other problem blew the controller too much load blew the actual control board inside made sharp enough No teeth are missing. It's a very fine blade. Just we're trying to rock with that there, maybe. Give us a quick wee blowout. Now, the sawdust might be a clue. Mahogany. That'll be a hard timber to cut through. Especially if it's old mahogany. Right. The armature in this looks okay. So fresh looking. No burnt spots, the motor's still good. It's just this here. Two options. One, simply replace it. But if you're at home and you don't want to spend the money on a new controller, you can if you want. And if you wanted to risk it, just wire the thing direct. All you'd have to do is just join these two black wires together. Just connect her on here anyway. Just snip that one off there and joint it on up here with another one of these crump connectors. You can remove the yellow line and remove the red line going to the controller. Take it out. Just have the battery run the motor itself directly and then it's only one line actually switching itself. The other is just going straight to the tool. You can do it that way. This isn't actually controlling the speed as much. It's more controlling the actual power or the amps. More safety. Shut the battery down and shut the tool down if anything goes wrong. So. If you do this here, you're monitoring the tool yourself. If you take it out, you're doing all that yourself. Anything goes wrong with these wires, if you melt it, if you overload like this again, and you short it out, these wires start to touch then, you're going to cook your battery, cook your tool very, very quickly. You can take it out, and you can run it direct. It'll run the exact same, no difference whatsoever. But if anything goes wrong, or if you mess up, or if you're overloading the machine, you're totally responsible. You're there to monitor it, not the little brain box. So something like this happens again, which it easily could, because this isn't going to shut down if you overload it. That there is going to melt wires together, which is going to short out and kill your battery. So if you do this, you risk your own batteries. Plus, there's a risk if your battery board isn't working correctly and she doesn't shut down once it goes down to a certain voltage. This will just keep sucking out the amps and kill your battery even faster. So if you do cut it out, you risk these things yourself, but if you want to play it safe, just replace it. You are better replacing it anyway because if anybody ever gets a lend of your tool, they're not going to know you've removed this and they're going to end up destroying stuff. So it's better just to have it on there. Get rid of that. And just swap it for the new one.
nothing difficult about this it's just a straight swap That's her. Wired in again. Reuse the same brushes. There's nothing wrong with these. I'll just stick them back in again. Now the other thing these can do is same as the grinder. If you're giving them a wild hot supper, they can overheat the brushes and melt the brush holder. This brass piece onto the plastic piece of the brush holder melts all the way onto the brushes and jams the brushes solid. So then you have to place the brushes, normally the caps and the brush holder. But if they don't do that, generally they're going to cook that controller. That's it. One Makita ESS 611 18 volt cordless scale saw with a new controller. Now, check us out for an old girl. A Kango 900. Don't see many of these coming in now, but they are still out there. These old things were slow running donkeys, but powerful donkeys. This is a 240 volt. These things here were brilliant. This was probably from sometime around the 1960s. This was easily about 50 or 60 years old. There's no year on it. But normally you get them in sometimes around the 60s or 70s. These here were a beast of a machine. A code written there, but it's not a year. All metal construction, built to last. These here were the standard. Anybody still has them that works, are probably still using them. This one here, 
What's wrong with it? Mm, not good. Problem with these things, they are very old. And there's not many parts available for them now. I have a box out here with a few parts left in it. But certain things are gone. Mainly motors. And the other main one is a switch. Now this isn't the switch here. The switch is actually down here. It's just to be connecting lever down to it. The switch is gone. We can't get it anymore. So unless we can do a repair job on this. It's not the lead anyway by the looks of it. But even the lead in these things are a torture to change. Let's get on the switch end, see if that's the problem. And as well, these things, because they're so old, they're all imperial. All imperial nuts and bolts. No metric in these. Yeah, that's gone. Get out the old style impactor. Impact screwdriver. Make sure I'm going the right way. Screwed in a tight spot when the head drops out. Sometimes you can free them out. Do this without hitting the camera. Lovely. As you slap the top of it, she actually turns the bottom. So as you're hitting it up with a hammer, you're actually driving it onto the head of the screw. And as she's driving in, she's turning. So no chance of it actually slipping out. But if they're dead tight, they'll eventually just tear it apart anyway. But good last resort before getting the drill out. Looks like it's switching. Sounded a bit faint to begin with. And sounds good there. not touch that if I don't have to. Sometimes the click just doesn't sound sharp enough. It sounds sharp enough now. Next we'll go on to the brushes. What the There we go. Hmm, should have went there first. Should have a simple fix. Set of brushes. Maybe a simple fix, but it's not all that simple. Brushes are gone too. See if I have anything for this thing. Now the brushes for these are gone. Can't get them anymore and have none left in stock. But carbon brushes, you can't bodge them anyway. Get yourself a different brush that's roughly the same and just file that to suit. But problem with these ones, long lead on it, long spring with a flat end. Now the flat end's not a big problem. But if you have a spring on them, you're gonna have some sort of flat part anyway can just cut that the ship just sort of fits inside the hole springs the problem when they get this long a spring they generally have a fatter spring as well once you go fatter it won't fit inside the hole so we need something like this with this size of spring it's long enough and thin enough and roughly the same size of a brush and these might do these are old brushes as well these are old Ryobi brushes. What they're off, I don't even know. I 
fairly old and I. Spring is roughly the same. That's around about the same diameter. That'll work. It's just too wide. The important thing is that they need to be thick enough. If they're thinner, they'll run, but they won't be very good for the motor. They'll be flapping around on side. So that one there is good, just need to file it down here and we'll clip this end off as well, just so it sits on top of here. We'll try to do this evenly as well on both sides. chamfer on both sides. Try to keep the chamfer even. So you're not putting a bevel on it. Obviously don't take away too much. You can make them smaller but you can't make them bigger. Not bad. Just put them with champers back on. Just to give a bit of clearance inside so they don't bind up against the edge of the brush holder. A little bit more up here. We're good to go. That's why you need the big spring. Anything shorter with a short brush, these won't even reach the bottom. It's quite a deep bore. That'll do the job. As long as this sweep end does a snag inside of here. One. Now for the other. Totally gone. I 
that should be her. One set of modified brushes. Just go in reverse to get the right thread. Then screw them down. She run now. Listen to that. What a machine. Didn't have to go into this at all. thing is now do I even have a chisel to fit this thing we actually had loads of Kango chisels in stock brand new ones for this model here the boring one and the smaller what you call SDS drills now for drilling at the walls all the way to the scrapyard now you need a chisel don't have any this might be it That'll do. Look at that thing. Never will you get another machine built like that. The Kango 900. New ones after that was the 950 as well. Fantastic machines. You still get them for sale on eBay and different places. Old used ones and they still sell for decent money. If they're running and they're hammering, they're worth having. The Kango 950. A workhorse of a machine lads. Set of brushes and that, and away she goes. But sadly, like I say, a lot of parts not available anymore. Little bits and pieces you just can't get. It's always little awkward things too. Brushes do make it awkward, kit you can modify them. Switch is the main thing. Once that goes and you can't repair it, you're in a bit of trouble then. Armature can't get even a service kit for these things. Don't even think you can get them anymore. Some companies online might have one available, but they're hard to get. But that's her, up and running again anyway. This is the HP 2032. And sadly we can't see the year. But let's see, that's from around 1990 some stage. Maybe 1999. What's wrong with it? Right, motor's running, chuck's not moving. Couldn't be that simple. Can't be serious. Oh, you must be joking, it can't be that simple. Finger 
lopper off right there anyway. Get that off of there. It's only about a string, but only about a thread, but so hand wraps around your chuck, take it off. If it's strong enough, it'll just deglove your finger if you get it caught. There's the work of the net factory. Very cautious of that. Seen enough times. Seen it happening enough times a machine. A little bit of string or rope sticking out. Hooks onto the finger, pops the finger or else the skin clean off. This is working. Your man just had it in neutral. Chuck's working, the lead's not broken, it's in good enough shape. Motor's running, gears are working. That must be the easiest repair this week so far. Best thing about it, can't even ring the customer to see if that's definitely why you left it on. No name, no number, no nothing. Don't know who dropped it on or where it came from. And for repair, there's nothing to repair and no way to ask what it was. Kita drill. This is a DHP 2071F 240 volt. Not looking good. Right, that's a motor. Mm, one of these. There's the heavier one, the 2071. So that's what, about 150, 200 euro. Put a motor under these, costs about 60 or 70. So it'll be well worth changing the motor on this one. Get the brushes out first, so we can take the armature out. What year is this one? 2000. 24 years old. Doesn't look bad, but it is. That doesn't want to come out, so we'll just press it out. That's her. One bad armature. Keep that. One set of brushes. One armature. Don't forget your wee pin. 
that's just for centering the motor mount onto the gearbox housing here. Dead easy repair. Most difficult part is getting the brushes on. And we're good to go. That's her. One Makita HP 2071F precision drill made in the year 2000. Up and running again with a new armature and a set of brushes. Now, next up is an awkward one. This is the Makita 36 volt cordless plunge saw, the DSP 600. The problem ain't the motor. Plenty of power on her. Working fine motor wise. Problem is the plunge. Very, very stuff. Now, this is a common one. We can back up again. There we go. This is a common one with the corded and the cordless Makita saw. Eventually, they do start to become very stuff. If you don't keep them cleaned out. Pun down on here. That's an actual pivot pun. The joint where she moves back and forth. Sawdust and dirt will eventually start to bind up inside of here and onto the actual pun on the shoulder of the aluminium saw. 
start binding up and making it very, very stiff. You can free them up to a degree, spraying on a wee bit of WD-40, putting in a wee bit of oil. It works for a little while, but then it's all covered in grease and oil. Where sawdust and dirt starts to stick to the oil then, over time, does make it actually worse instead of better. So eventually this needs to be taken apart and cleaned out. And to be honest, it's not the easiest of jobs to do. Plus, not even just not easy, it's high risk. It's all aluminium housing and it's one steel pan going through it. You have to support the aluminium housing to press out the steel pan. And if you mess it up, you bust the housing. And the housing is the whole motor housing. Not something you want to break. We'll see if we can fix this up. It's a very cheap fix, but it's awkward as hell. We'll see if we can do something with this. So this is the pan itself, and as you can see, I'm supporting this to press it out. There's not much meat there to press anything against. You have to get around, you have to get around socket or something to support the aluminium as this has been pressed out. Not much there to support against. If you're off at all, it tips over to one side, it takes the aluminium off it. So this one's not for the faint-hearted. As we clean out first, get rid of the dust. So I have a socket head here. It actually locks that pan into place. If this wasn't too bad you could undo that socket head and you should be able to press this out fairly easily that's if it was free enough but now that's so stiff this pan's not going to come out very easily honestly that's the biggest let down in this saw but then it's not like it doesn't do any work it's actually a 2018 machine so it's got four or five years of work done before it starts to bind up like this here i would say they should redesign and do something about this but manufacturers and redesigning things never goes to plan they might fix this but change something else and to be honest this saw uh, is only second to the fast tool to be quite honest this and the corded version are one of the best plunge saws or track saws you're going to get especially for price and popularity fast tool would be a wee bit better but the fast is a lot more expensive and not as popular these are the main one that boys actually like and stick to and actually get a good run time out of them so if that is the worst part of the saw leave it as it is you wouldn't want them going taking out a new saw just to improve on this new saw mightn't be as good you got a tried and tested winner stick to it right see if we can get this out I first off need to get this here spring out as the actual spring for lifting the saw back up again so she's under tension she's gonna shoot out Watch the fingies. We twist, and it pops out. So you just sit on two wee shoulders there. Pushes up and twists over to lock it into place. Now another thing you can sometimes do does work the odd time. You don't want to go to the risk of stripping this down. Take that socket head out and get some grease and put it down into that hole. Get as much down as you can and put the screw back in again. Put it down all the way tight, take it out again, put a bit more in and use it like a grease nipple. See if you can get the grease to actually push through. It's 
expel the dirt either side and actually free it up. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it says you're stripping the whole thing down. I'm taking this here pan out. It's worth a try. This time we're just going to see if we can get it out. So we're going to have to set this up in the bearing press. I'll press down here to press this out. And we need to support it from the underside. It's an awkward setup to have in the bearing press and we don't have a big enough press. You have to dismantle the whole motor to make this unit smaller to get it on. As you can see, she's balanced very precisely in three wee sockets. Try to get it as flat as possible. It's going to be pressed down, the thing doesn't jump or move or jump move around the place. If you don't have it sitting as flat as possible without before she's put under load, and if we press down, everything's going to lift till it is flat. All your supports will fall, and then if she skates then on you, she's going to go flying to the ground. Not what you want. Try to get her levelled and sitting up the way you want before you start pressing down. And once you start pressing, if you're unsure at all, if you think she's going to skate, if you think anything shifted or this isn't sitting underneath the pin, stop and check again. Because if you mess this up and you bust this aluminium housing, you're onto a lot of extra money. That's tight. If it gets very tight, don't keep forcing it. Give it some extra help, a little bit of heat. Just heat this boy on here, holds the actual pan. Let's see if that'll allow it to free up a wee bit. Here it's starting to creak. Give it up more pressure. That's it starting to go. Only joking. She's already through. She's bottomed out in the socket something longer to get out the rest of the way. Here's the culprit, the centre pin. So it looks like it wasn't dirt and sawdust. Looks like it was more corrosion. But that's why she's tight. It's all the way at the bottom. Lift out the back. So we have her completely off. Give this a good clean. Give it a good fine wet and dry sandpaper. Just give it a wee ream out. You don't want to unplug in that hole, you just want to clean out whatever's on it. Oh. I'm using P800 here. You can go finer if you don't want to go any coarser. Roll it up. Get it good and tight so it goes onto the bore. 
and I'll leave it WD. And that should be all you need to clean that bore out. Same for this one. If you use anything coarser, you're going to make the hole too big. This is only aluminium, so you will wear it away quite quickly if you use a coarse sandpaper. You only want to clean it, you don't want to make it any bigger. Any extra play in this pan. It's going to show in the cut. If this is moving, if the head can move at all, you're not going to get a square cut anymore. So make sure you only clean it out and you don't make it bigger. And the same for the pan. Just give it a quick clean. That's all you need to do. This should now be free enough to just push back in again without the need for the bearing press. Now, I said at the beginning, you can put a little bit of oil or spray onto this to free it up. But now that you actually have dismantled it and cleaned it out completely, don't put oil on it. Any oil you put on, it's just going to encourage sawdust to stick to it. Better off going on dry than going on drenched in oil. If that centre bolt that holds it on has gouged out the metal, you can file down the centre of it a wee bit to make it nice and smooth and make sure there's no lip. Apart from that, light sand will do. Should be able to pass that through easily. And the same on here. Now, to reattach the two halves, same as taking it off, put it all the way down to the bottom first, and then drop on the back of it. When the back's in, lift it up. Then, all you have to do, is drop on your pan. Simple as that. To hold it in place to make sure it doesn't come out. Just a socket head screw. And I'm not actually sure if I have a dedicated video on this repair on my page already. If I don't, I might actually just repost this again on its own, this one repair, outside of this longer video that I'm doing today. Simply because if somebody has this problem with their machine and they Google it, at least they'll get a dedicated video on how to actually fix it without having to watch through a big long hour long video. So if you see this coming up again, don't panic. It's only just to help other people. So that's the two halves back together. Pin back in. And moving smoothly. That's the way you want it. Next step after that is to reinstall your spring. Some people find this quite tricky, but it's only tricky if you overthink it. All you're doing is you're pushing the spring in, twisting the back piece, this wee, this wee piece back here. So if you want, you can take this screw off completely. There's normally a flat on the other side, you can put a screwdriver on to help turn it, but you don't have to do that. Push it on and just twist it like that. Sometimes you can even actually do it with the screwdriver. To help along, 
and you actually have it pushed up get your two fingers either side and lift the spring at the same time then you can use your two metal fingers at the same time to rotate that wee plastic insert to twist it into place once it's twisted around just tighten up the screw that's it Everything else just screws together. And just like some of the cordless saws, that's your back flange. Takes both a 20mm and a 30mm centers. So you've got a 30mm center bore, you can just flip this over and use this side. But normally it's a 20mm. Sir. One Makita plunge saw. A DSP 600. The stuff plunge. That is how you free up the base on the Makita plunge saw. Either the DSP 600 or the SP 6000 corded version. Same mechanism, same build, same way of fixing it. Won't go up and down, and she's just sticking. Get to dismantle it, clean the pan and the housings, and it'll soon work again. It's a cheap fix, but it's very awkward. And before I forget, give the man back his Allen key. That's her. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you're enjoying the videos. That's all for today. Give us a wee like and a follow if you are enjoying the videos. And if you want to hit subscribe or become members, please do. Thanks for watching. Chat to you later.